what's up? My name is Andre and that's my C++ tutorial for the Unreal Engine 4. Pretty much that's the starting one episode and I just show you how to add a class and how to set up your project for that. So for me it's just to click somewhere a right click and I've got my option to new C++ class. And here you can choose the base class and you can either show all classes to actually see every single possible class that you can inherit from. I mean, from the built-in engine types, you can do your own third-party types. But let's say I just want to make an actor. Next, and I, we have to provide it with the name. So let's give it an example actor. And here we can choose for which project it is, because we can have, for example, some plugins, some other projects, and we can just choose, all right, which one uh, will need this class, whether it's uh, public or private, and yeah, we can choose the folder for that. I just use the default, which will be in the sources and in my YouTube project, and all we need to do is just click on the create class. So now the engine will add some variables and files that will be related to this project so that we can actually work on our C++ stuff because for the starter we have some built.cs files which are just C# -sharp files that uh, define which modules and things we will use from the engine because by default using everything will be an overkill for our class I mean for our code base because Unreal Engine has so much code that including everything for your stuff will be just an overkill. So for example, right now I've got my two classes. Let me just go to the containing folder. And here I've got my source with the build CS, also my target CS. And it's right here in the source folder, which was just generated for the project. And yeah, the first thing is in the build CS, we have this uh, public dependency model names. And here are the models that we are using. So for example, if I want to use widgets in C++, I have to add a new model, which is called UMG. Or if I want to create my own graph in C++, then I will need to add some graph or editor uh, models. And it will depend, because if you want to do that, you will get lots of errors that uh, there are no symbols or the linker doesn't know about certain functions and you want to just start your project, so you need to remember that. And yeah. Also you have like this target target files, which are just uh, saying for what target is your game. And this is what you have to remember when you are creating your uh, game in C++ that if you, have, if you want to add something that is not related to those four models, you have to include this model because otherwise Linker won't let you just create anything. And yeah, so whenever I create my class, you see this fill out or copyright notice in the description page of project settings. So in project settings, you can just declare what is generated on the top. Normally just, uh, yeah, that's my name. I created this in this year and uh, those are the rights, blah, blah, blah. This kind of stuff. And this will be generated in top of your classes because you have shit tons of them. You don't want to write it each time because it's waste of time. So the next thing is just the core minimal, just pretty much the uh, default things that you can find in the engine. Uh, the game framework for the actor, because we are inheriting from the actor, so the actor stuff. And also the gener generated .h. So pretty much Unreal generates some code under the hood related to our classes, so he can use it in its own like scripting way, bit blueprint, bit whatever it, it is. And whenever we are, for example, using U class, whenever we are using some U properties, so on and so forth, which are just macros that generate a certain code for our things. Uh, the, also the generate body, which is re required in Unreal, will pretty much uh, create this file and it will hold some certain stuff about our class that will be used in uh, the Unreal's architecture. So, yeah, and here's our CPP file. So let me just start with the basics. Let me just 
just make it bigger so you guys can see everything. So for the starter, we've got our class, which is from our YouTube project API, and it just example actor from actor. In Unreal, as you can see, we've got these prefixes of certain like base classes, be it U from new object, be it A from A actor or whatever it is. So just remember that Unreal does that because sometimes you might have a problem that you want to use a string and there's instead of string there's something called f string <laughs> or f name or whatever so yeah ja that so starting with the basics you can see you have our begging play and stick which are the basic events that are just overridden from the base classes and we are using them in a, from our v table and also if you get our constructor we can add our destructor whenever we want to so let me just paint a bit all right uh, so we got this super bug in play and what it does is it's calling the bug in play from the blueprint and the same goes for tick so pretty much we can do some some cpp code before bug in play and after that will be some cpp code after after begging play. And the same goes for the tick and other functions that we want to override. That's pretty much how it works. If you remove this supper something from the implementation, uh, the blueprint begin play, if we use this class in the blueprint wise, uh, won't work. Alright, and we also got the can event tick, which means, alright, can this like object ever use uh, its tick function? Because tick, you know, it's not really optimal if you don't need to use that because each frame you are doing something and right now I have nothing in my tick like maybe if blueprint is using it then uh, sure I can leave that but yeah you have to think about that you can also uh, set the uh, tick frequency you can do lots of stuff just to optimize that so that's the first thing and yeah so that's the starter you can see we've got our U class and let's go with that so class specifiers. Uh, for, I mean pretty much the whole thing is in documentation and remembering everything is not a way to go because Unreal is growing like each month and there are lots of changes but pretty much you just google some certain U class, you prepare to you function and you just get the specifiers that you can use and you can see that for example is blueprint table and I can exposes this class as an acceptable base class for creating blueprints. So right now, if I want to create blueprints of this class, I just need to add a uh, blueprint table and that's it. And uh, for that, there will be a generated code in my generated.h, uh, which will just be used. And uh, the reason everything is not added because if every single specifier was added, there would be shit tons of generated code and it would be just wrong because you are generating shit tons of code for like uh, your classes and everything has to be computer generated and used in like editor and pff, that's that, that just not a way to go. So uh, keep it as slim as possible, like have the least amount of things that you have to, I mean, just keep the things that you need and nothing else because there's no reason to. And yeah, you can just look at that. The link will be in the description and the links are also on my Discord channel. With, uh, the link to the Discord is also in the description whenever you have some questions about that or you need help. So in this video I just uh, go with the basic variables. So pretty much the thing is uh, if I for example want to create an actor variable. So let's say there's something actor and it will be some some guy. Alright, so I've, I've created my variable and it's actor. And it's a pointer because actors are huge motherfuckers and all right yeah there's there's lots of different stuff as you can see so we are holding this as a pointer and now here's the thing since unreal has a really dynamic like environment and uh, you don't really know whenever i mean whether so, some object will be destroyed or not 
you have to keep your values as either a smart pointer or give it a new property without even nothing. Like new property works. U property works pretty much like U class that you can add some dependencies. For example, here we have a link, and I can say, "All right, uh, is it the final flags? They want to make something uh, blueprint." Oh, this for the function. Uh, yeah, but, uh, no. So properties and, for example, edit anywhere. If I want to edit in the blueprints, and I can also show you some of those, like in the usage or meta tags that you can also use for several other things related to the editor. So the thing is, we don't know whenever this is destroyed and we can work on garbage. Because, all right, we have a pointer to certain actor, but this guy was destroyed of, by the Unreal GC because Unreal has its own garbage collector uh, implemented. So you don't really know whether something is destroyed un unless you check the whole implementation, which sometimes is dodgy because for example, in networking, uh, actors that become irrelevant uh, are automatically like collected. <laughs> and yeah, shit hits the fan sometimes. So you're adding this new property, which pretty much, much guards this variable, working like a kind of a weak pointer. But uh, instead of that, you can just say the weak. Weak object pointer, and we are creating a um, uh, weak object pointer from a Nanus implementation. As you can see, it's like a normally object from the C++, but with uh, with certain implementation from Unreal. We also, instead of inline, people use force inline. Like there are lots of different like um, macros for Unreal, which I sometimes don't understand because, for example, there's a huge const expression, which is just a const expression, but they hold it as a macro for whatever reason. <laughs> and yeah, so either hold something as a smart pointer or just uh, add a new property because using using row pointers in Unreal is, you can, you can say just wrong. Like you, you don't know when a, uh, like, Jesus, you, all right. Assuming that something is valid at a certain time is dodgy because you don't really lose that much performance unless it's some class that does some hardcore pathfinding, like pathfinding algorithm or whatever. But in most cases, you are, you don't care that something is a new, like weak, weak or short or unique pointer and you are saving yourself lots of crashes from that. So just either add a new property or make it a smart pointer. So right now, for example, if I run as a debug game editor on Windows 64, I can just run that. I can also, here's my project and I can just close it. All right, so Everything is pretty much created, checked, and the analyst header tools and other stuff will go to the work. And yeah, also the some code before and after works in Tick and other events. And if we are not using Tick, we don't, for example, need to set this variable. And all right, so we went for the compilation and the project is starting. And also, when your project is loading, you get some virtual copies of every single class that you're creating. So if you're using some dirty stuff in your constructors, you might get an error when the engine is loading because uh, Unreal is creating in a CDO, which is just a, like pre-init pre for your whole project it will create an one instance of your class in the memory. So just uh, to make sure you sometimes want to use some macros to check if it's pre-init so you won't get this error while loading. And yeah, so I started and I can just go to my view options, so show C++ classes and I've got my YouTube project and example actor. And right now it's like nothing. I can 
get it to the level and it's literally nothing. But I can, for example, right now delete it and change my yet actor, like YouTube actor parent to my example actor. And right now I'm inheriting from my C++ class, which has like nothing. So we won't pretty much see any difference, but I can in my U property add an edit anywhere. Now, since it's hello file, I need to restart the project. If it was a change in the CPP, I can click the compile button inside the editor and then the change will apply to my editor. But here, if I saved my work, which I did, you can see that I have my some guy and I can assign it to something. So, Mm, that's like the U properties for you, and also I can add a blueprint with write, which allows me to get a getter and setter inside blueprints because normally uh, you don't get that. So now, also, if I restart that, I can just show you that it's not there. Alright, so here, and if I want to get some actor, I don't see anything. So that's it. And now if I just restart my Unreal, um, my editor. And go to my edit actor. Now I can do get, some, get some guy and set some guy. So I'm getting my getters and setters for this variable. And that's the basic communication of like variables and the editor itself in terms of blueprints. Because sometimes you you either work on some UMG and you don't want to do UMG in Slate or C++ because that's kind of masochistic. So you want to uh, merge your C++ for the logic and your UMG blueprint for the like cool looking stuff. So you make sure that everything is just looking okay. And the same goes for the blueprints, like you're working with some designers, you're working with some artists, whatever, then you just want to give him some API, be it function, be it a variable or whatever, from the C++ side and do the whole logic here, but they can just call it, set it, get it or whatever in their blueprints. So that's it for the first episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from that. If you get any questions, need help, just uh, join the Discord and ask me away. I ask as far as, as fast as I can. So yeah. That's it from me. Thank you. Bye.